Hello, this is Vitualis the Chess Noob, learning and having fun with chess. The Giraffe Attack is a silly opening with a silly name that's awesome fun to play in the Vienna game. Today I'm going to go through some of the ideas of the opening and some theory, and then demonstrate it in action with two games. So the Giraffe Attack begins with the Vienna game, so e4, e5, knight, c3. If black responds with the immediate bishop to c5, also known as the Anderson defense, we now have this very fun line, queen to g4 with an immediate attack on the g7 pawn, the giraffe attack. Why is it called the giraffe attack? Well, I think it was named by Eric Schiller in his book, Unorthodox, Un Unorthodox Chess Openings, where he writes, we might call this the giraffe attack because white is sticking his neck out here. What did he mean by that? Well, depending on how black responds, you can't directly take that pawn on g7. It is, uh, it is potentially highly problematic, uh, and that's what he meant. I'm going to cover the three most common responses by black uh, and what we can do with white against those responses. Now, the first response, which is the third most common response, occurs about 10% of the time, which is also the best response by black, is knight to uh, f6. Against knight to f6, there's pretty much only one good move for white. And this move is queen parking onto g3. And queen on g3, the idea is to place pressure on the e5 pawn, which potentially comes with check. Uh, now, here, black is completely fine. In fact, black is slightly ahead, and if they play that best move, knight to f6, basically this is kind of like your penance for playing a silly opening, and black, you just have to play chess. Black is ahead here. However, the one thing you absolutely should not do is to look, ooh, I think I can take that pawn. This is very, very bad. If you do that, Stockfish rates this at about, um, let's have a look, I think it's minus four and a half. Minus four and a half. Why is it so bad? Well, they've got rook to g8, attacking the queen. Of course, a rook is defended by the knight. The knight also defends that uh, pawn as well. The queen here has only one square to go, which is queen to h6. Now, pause the video here to see whether or not you can find the best next move for black. Did you find it? It's the stunning bishop captures pawn on f2. If you actually um, have a look at what Stockfish thinks about this move, Stockfish rates this as a brilliant move because if black opts to capture the, uh, ca capture the bishop, it, they now have a royal fork, they win your queen, and black basically wins. So you uh, so in this position, if you found yourself in this position, the king actually had to slide to d1. But this is an absolutely terrible position for white, so the moral of the story is, in this position, you should not capture. You can only go to g3, which is, as I said, the square you can basically move to with any of the responses by black, um, trying to place pressure on the e5 pawn. So that is the best response for black, occurs the third, and it's the third most common response. The second most common response, uh, and black does has to do, must do something about that, uh, about that g-pawn, is a much more direct uh, push to g6. Now in this position, yep, you can slide the queen, uh, park it on a g3, same idea as before, or you could play the scumbag move, queen straight back to d1, undeveloping the queen. What's, what's going on here? Well, black made an early move, and you force them to push their pawn forward. Obviously, that bishop can't you know, get into that fianchetto position. This damages the kingside structure in the longer term. White is actually ahead. So white gains a slight advantage in the opening, chess continues, and black plays with a permanently damaged kingside structure. This is perfectly okay. Now, I think, to be honest, if you play the giraffe attack, you should probably place the queen onto g3, you know, play aggressively. This occurs maybe about 12, 15% of the time. Now, the move that occurs roughly 65, 75% of the time is 
queen to f6. This is, by evaluation wise, completely okay for black. It's actually equal, 0, 0, 0. And white here has two possible responses. The first response is a safe response, and that's going to be demonstrated in game one. And the second response is the tricky, spicy response, which will be demonstrated in game two. So the safe response is, um, well, before I talk about that, um, firstly, white must do something about this double attack on the pawn, okay? So let's say they do something, uh, you know, that's non-committal, pushing that pawn, check, king forced, checkmate. So white must do something against that double attack. Safe move, queen to f3, blocking the queen, inviting a queen trade, and if they take, you know, you capture back, develop your knight, chess continues, you play a queenless game, white is slightly ahead, and you're fine. Now, the spicier move, the tricksy move, is knight to f3, a very normal looking developing move. And basically, you're almost lulling your opponent into a sense of, uh, you know, a sense of complacency. What you're actually going to do next is trying to get the knight to d5 attacks the queen, attacks a pawn on c7, which of course comes with a uh, fork of the king and rook. If the queen tries to defend the, uh, the c pawn in any way, our queen can take the g pawn. And you know, that is highly, highly problematic for, uh, for, for black. But here, it's not necessarily obvious that that's what we're trying to do. So the best move here for black is they can either develop their knight to e7, which of course helps defend that square, or you know, c6, pawn to c6, which again defends that square. They're the two best moves for black. And if that happens, chess continues. They'll probably won't see that move. They may well play, okay, you know, uh, you know, white develop the other knight, I'll develop my knight, and then this is a huge blunder because you've now got that move. As I said before, really bad for black. And in fact, I think it's, yeah, it's plus 6.5. And black is basically lost from this position. We'll see that uh, in action in game two. Let's have a quick look at the review of game one first. So game one, reasonably accurate. Um, typical sort of uh, Vienna game sort of uh, <laughs> style game where pretty equal in the beginning, but then you capture a major... Uh, advantage when the opponent makes a mistake. Let's go straight on now to the analysis. All right, so starting from giraffe attack, in this game my opponent did play the queen move. I said this is the single most common move uh, over half, 65, 75% of games. Black will respond this way. I play the safe move, inviting queen trade. They don't bite, uh, so they sort of push uh, push their sort of d-pawn to d6, which makes some sense. But now I give them a prod with uh, with knight to d5, of course, you know, with that threat, with that threat. And here they sort of, uh, you know, they sort of get a um, little bit freaked out, decide to just trade queens, I now capture, so a little bit ahead on development. Uh, they uh, have to bring the bishop back, you know, to defend uh, defend the pawn. Here I thought, look, I'm just going to take the bishop, so I get the bishop pair. I don't think this was the most accurate move. I think uh, potentially black might be a little bit better here, um, but, oh no, no, I'm still slightly ahead. But, you know, here I was pretty happy. You know, they've got a damaged pawn structure and I'm a little bit ahead on development. So I'm trying to continue with, um, with my sort of uh, development, so rapidly develop. So bishop to c4, they push a pawn ostensibly to prevent, I think, knight from coming here. Uh, short castles, and so I'm much ahead on development now. So attack, they capture, capture back, they take, and here they've sort of made a mistake because there's a potential pin there. Here I thought, you know, maybe I'll, before I make use of that, I'll try to, you know, get a uh, get a fork, uh, but they sort of see it. Uh, but, you know, this is still a mistake. They haven't addressed the fact that this knight is potentially pinned, and now they've also put that knight <coughs> out on the edge of the board. So rook out, so very powerful pin. So basically that knight is lost. They tried to defend, you know, place pressure on the pin piece, pawn forward. Yep, now straight up piece uh, and basically almost no loss of compensation. Um, so here, yep, let's trade, happy to trade. 
there we go, and I'm basically a full piece up. And the rest of this game is really just about me not trying to lose the advantage, uh, and, uh, and generally it's not a difficult game to play here. So I'm more than happy to have balanced trades. Uh, you know, losing a pawn is fine. Uh, here, you know, let's trade, they do. Um, and here, they make a mistake, they line that up. So now I can force a trade of rooks. And so we enter an end game where I have a bishop, they do not, I'm basically winning. And it's really a matter of, you know, shuffling, uh, trying to get this pawn potentially to, uh, to queen. There we go, almost done. And here I make a mistake. So, well, not really a mistake. Here I had a quicker way of checkmate, which I didn't see. So this is a pattern to potentially know, which is king forward. This king is now completely stuck, as you can see, can't go anywhere, uh, which means that this would be checkmate. So that's a pattern which I missed uh, in this game. Uh, instead, uh, what I did was, yeah, so somewhat less uh, efficient way of getting to, uh, to the checkmate. Uh, but, you know, this was an easy checkmate because it entered an end game up a bishop. Let's move on now to game two. So game two, again, reasonably accurate game. We see very equal until the opponent makes a mistake. And this was a rather shorter game. So if you remember, this is going to be with the spicy response. Uh, and my opponent, who was rated somewhat uh, higher than me, uh, wasn't able to respond well to the giraffe attack. You know, one of the advantages of it just being a very unusual uh, and aggressive line. Let's now go straight to the analysis. So my opponent also played queen to f6, the single most common response to giraffe attack. And in this game, I played the spicy response, so knight to f3. And if you remember, the opponent must do something about the impending knight d5. So potentially knight e7 is good, or c6 is also good. My opponent thought for a little while, and instead of I decide to counterattack my queen with knight to h6. That is a blunder, almost plus three. And what we should do here is bring the queen, park it onto g3. This is the good square for the queen in the giraffe attack. My opponent now has another opportunity to prevent my knight playing, uh, being played to d5, but they miss that threat instead of opening up the diagonal with d6 for the bishop, but that's too slow. Knight d5, a uh, very, very strong move, and we look at the stockfish evaluation, almost plus seven. So pretty much here, I'm completely winning. My opponent opted to bring the queen all the way back to d8 to protect the c7 pawn, but because they've now not addressed this issue of the g7 pawn, I can now capture with queen safely. And that comes with the fork of the rook and knight. They obviously defend the rook, which now means I can take that hanging knight. I think my opponent here was probably a bit frazzled uh, and they sort of attack my knight with bishop. Here I actually miss the best move, which is knight to f6, which is an absolute fork of the king and bishop. Uh, basically here I have an opportunity to just straight up take another piece. I actually miss that. Uh, instead, what I thought I would do would be to, you know, encourage a trade of, uh, of queens. If they talk, you know, that would, I, I saw that coming and I thought I would then just win the, you know, the middle and end game potentially. My opponent didn't want to bike, you know, they're down a piece, that makes sense. And here I thought, ooh, if I could get my knight there, that would be a royal fork, very nice. So I decided to play queen to g5 here, ostensibly attacking the bishop. The opponent uh, decides to protect that bishop by uh, pushing a pawn, missing the royal fork. So knight to f6, royal fork, and my opponent opts to resign. Good game, GG. The big takeaway from this game is that the giraffe attack is fun to play, and that's enough of a reason to use an opening. I hope you enjoyed this video, and thanks for watching.